Hey dudes and dudettes, what's up? Chris Super here, lovely to see you all again today. We're gonna to be looking at the solo from Whiskey in the Jar, the Thin Lizzy cover by Metallica. It is an absolute doozy. And I don't care if you like the original more, I really, really like this version too. Anyway, let's take a look. Alright guys, before we get too excited, we just need to talk about the tuning, which is D standard, which goes to D, G, C, F, A, D. So get yourself in tune, and we'll get started. Alright guys, let's have a look at the first section. You will notice as I'm teaching this, I've removed that octave or effect. It will be a little bit less cluttered if we don't have to deal with that, uh, and you'll be able to hear the notes more clearly as I'm explaining them. So there's that little disclaimer. We're going to start off with this phrase. So I'm hitting seven of the third string twice. And I'm gonna hit it a third time and do that rolling legato. From that point, I'm gonna be playing seven, nine, 11 as that rolling legato, and then I play this. Let's slow that down. I'm playing eight of the second and then nine, 11 on the third. And then it'll play seven, nine on the third string and slide that to 12. This is what we should have thus far. Hopefully that's making sense. Then I work into this phrase. Let's slow that down. So I'm gonna be playing seven, eight, 10 on the first string. Then back to eight. And then from this point is where I've got my little cheeky hammer on pull off trill going seven, eight, seven on the first string. So we've got a little trill there. And then I go from 10 of the second string back down to seven of the first. From that point, I'm gonna go backwards and forwards on the second string. I'm gonna play 10, 8, 7, 8, 10. All together. Now I move forward again, and then I go into this phrase. Let's slow that down. So I'm playing 7, 8 on the first string. I'll hit 8 again and grace slide that to 10. And then I work into this kind of pentatonic-y phrase. Let's slow that down. I'm sliding into 12 of the second string and playing 10, 12 on the first. So I'm gonna hit that 10 twice and do almost a grace note hammer into 12. Yeah, that sounds cooler. From that point, I'm just playing 12, 10, 12. And then we go for a tone and a half bend. So with tuning that tone and a half bend, I'm trying to get 12 to sound like 15. I'm going up the tone and a half. I hit it again at the top and bring it down. At the end of that, playing 10 on the first string still, and then I play this. So that's going 12, 10, 12 as a pull off and then an extra pick. Then I work into this phrase. Let's slow that down and that will be the whole section. We'll take it a bit slower. I'm gonna play seven, 10 on the first string. Then I've got a grace slide backwards from 10 to eight. After I've done that grace note slide, I'm just gonna be doing some descending runs uh, that work diatonically through the scale. It's quite predictable. From that eight, I'm playing seven, five. And then the second string, I play eight, six, five. 
and I'm gonna repeat those first three notes on the first string, but I'm gonna legato them. So I'm gonna play eight, seven, five as legato, and then I'm gonna repeat the second string exactly the same, eight, six, five. I'm just gonna add two more notes now, the seven, five, and then the second section, we're gonna have that big vibrato on four, but we'll leave that for later. So I'll just go through that last chunk again. And that will be all of the first section. I'm gonna go right back to the start and play it again at a relatively slow pace, and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. One more time with some tabs. So the start of the second section, we've just come out of that little run. So I'm going from the fourth fret of the third string, I'm playing the four, and then I'm bending that a semitone. I'm going up and down. So I'm going one and two and three and four and. So I go all the way up to four and, and then I'll just vibrato it. So the beginning of that next bar will be sort of an on the beat thing with the vibrato. Okay, then we're gonna borrow a lot of phrases from the first section. All of that's identical. So if we can just borrow that thought process, then I go into this phrase. So it's the seven, 10, the grace notes slide back to eight and then descending down the scale. This is where things change up a little bit. Let's slow that down. Now I've seen James play this a little bit differently live. He kind of messes around with it, but this is um, as close to what I could get on the album uh, as I think is possible. I think this sounds um, more accurate than what he plays live, but bless him, he's great. Let's not question it. But there's this cool thing he does here. Let's slow that down. I'm hammering five, six, eight on the second string. And then I pull off back to the five. From that point, I'm gonna gray slide into eight of the first string from seven. When I go back to that, what will be E, I guess, in standard tuning, it'll be a D now, but the fifth fret of the second string. I'm gonna hit that fifth fret again. I'm gonna grace from eight to 10 on the first string. Good jump back to the five. At the end of that, I'm gonna grace from eight to 12. And then I go to this kind of double stop, almost Jimi Hendrix uh, kind of chordal idea. Let's slow that down. So I'm gonna have a flat finger covering 12 of the middle two strings. I'm actually gonna hit that three times. On the third hit, I'm gonna grace into 14 of the third string, but uh, in that Hendrixian manner, I'm gonna have that flat finger there still playing that minor third interval. Then I go back to that 12-12 thing, that perfect fourth. At the end of that, I'm gonna be playing a power chord from 10 and 12, then I'm gonna play 9-12, 10-12, and then 12 and 12, so it goes. All together. At the end of that, I've got two notes that will lead into the next section. I'm playing 14 of the fourth into 12 of the third. And that's gonna be all of the second section. So let's go right back to the start from that bent vibrato idea. I'll use all of those ideas that we stole from the first section and we'll put it all together relatively slowly and then do it again even slower with some tabs.
One more time with some tabs. Okay, so we've just come out of section two from those two leading notes, and then we play this phrase. So from those leading notes, I've got three bends on 14 of the third string, all whole step, and at the top of the third, I'm gonna hit the bend again, bring it down, and pull off to 12 of the third string, and then jump to the fourth string. At the end of that, Let's slow that down. I'm doing a hammer on pull off from 12, sorry, just a hammer on from 12 to 14, and then I'm gonna play the 12 of the third. I hit 12 of the third again, jump to 14 of the string above, then back to 12. So, with the phrase before, relatively bluesy. So we'll go from the two leading notes from the previous section and put together everything we've got thus far. Then I work into this phrase. Let's slow that down. So I've got a bit of a chromatic thing going on here. I'm playing 12, 11, 10 on the fourth. And then I'm just gonna play 12, 10 again. I've got a cheeky grace note thing here going from 12 to 14. Then back to 10. Sorry, then back to 12. So we've got from that point, I'm playing 15, 14 on the fourth string. So a lot of this phrase is happening on that fourth string. Then from this point, kind of working this in a circle, I'm playing 12 of the third, 14 of the fourth, and then 14, 12 on the third string. So I'm kind of thinking of it as a circular motion here. the end of that. I'm going to slide into 17 on the second string. You can grace it from 15 if you wish. And then from that point, I'm working in crotchets or quarter note triplets. Uh, these are really, really annoying to do because they don't kind of land right on the beat. So I'm going pineapple, pineapple. Let's slow that down. So I'm going to have four triplets from the... Uh, four tripleted notes from that 12th fret. And then the next two are graced from seven to nine. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. The start of the next bar will have another graced hammered note. And then I hit the nine again two more times and that's gonna be the next kind of group of quarter note triplets. So we've got... At the end of that, I go back to straight eighth notes. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing nine to 12 on the third as a slide and then 12 to 14 as a slide. That's gonna resolve uh, on 12. Sounds like take my breath away, slow that down. Let's have a look at what we've got thus far from the start of the section. We'll keep going, there's a little bit more to it, but I don't wanna get too overwhelmed. This is what we should have thus far. Okay, then from that point, I go, I'll hit the 12 and then I'll hit it again and play 12, 14. Then I go into this phrase. Let's slow that down. I'm playing 15, 17 on the second string. It's all relatively um, pentatonic -y rather. Hammer on. And then I play 15 to 17 on the first string as a hammer on. And then I want to play 15, 17, 15. So that's going to be a hammer on pull off. At the end of that, I'm gonna play 17 of the second string and then 15 of the first string twice. At the end of that, I'm gonna borrow that lead into that first riff again. We're gonna hit seven three times and on the third seven, I'm gonna roll that 9-11 on the third string. And that'll get us ready for section four. 
So this section isn't that complicated, it's just kind of hard to remember it and put it all together. I'm gonna to play it again at a gentleman's pace and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. One more time with some tabs. All right, last section is gonna borrow some of those riffs we've heard throughout the song. We're gonna borrow this from the previous phrase. And then we're going to go into this phrase again. That was 8 at the 2nd, 9, 11 on the 3rd, then 7, 9 with a slide to 12 on the 3rd. So we've got this again. So we're going to do that whole thing one more time. And then I go into this. Let's slow that down. I'm playing 7, 9 on the 3rd string. Eight of the second string. So I've got four bends from 10 of the second string. I'm going just up on the first three. One. And then controlling it down on the fourth. Then from that point, hammer on from eight to 10, and then I hit the eight again. And then I want to hit that eight and sort of slide off to get ready for whatever that last chunk is. It kind of helps to slide backwards and then we're in sort of that position to do that nice country licking phrase over there. So let's have a look at what we've got thus far. Then I've got this phrase. So I'm doing two open notes on the third string then hammering two uh, to open two, four on that third one. And I've got, so I've got, I'm playing three of the second string and then open two open on the third string. At the end of that, I've got two bends from the second fret of the third string and then open. And that's the whole solo. I'm gonna to put together that last chunk one more time, nice and slowly, and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. So borrowing the end phrase from the previous section. One more time with some tabs. And that was the solo from Metallica's version of Whiskey in the Jar. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please click the links in the description box if you want to add to this lesson and anything else I do. Join up with the Patreon with all the cool kids. Also have a new book out that I'm very proud of, Creative Shred Guitar Exercises. Uh, all of the insane stuff you can do with shredding, sweeping, legato and tapping. It is all in that book if you're stuck in a rut, wanting to do something new, interesting and sexual. Uh, my next book in line, what I have next, uh, Shred Guitar Improvisation, if you want to up your understanding how to solo over chord changes and interesting sequences. My second book, Rock Guitar Mode Mastery, if you want to up your understanding of the modes in a composed and improvised context. And finally, my first book, probably where you should start, Ultimate Shred Machine, uh, the fundamentals of shredding, sweeping, legato, and tapping, if you want to get your head around all those sexy techniques. And if you're not much of a reader, I do have all four of these books available in a video format on chrissuper.com and Udemy. So you can check them out there if you are not much of a reader. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me. I'll catch you guys all very soon.